Hello, I'm Stefan, and welcome back to another episode of Japan at War. Many of the Japanese generals at this time were already tired of war and seriously began to doubt whether taking China was even possible or even worth it. Kano Kiyomasa was not one of them and continued to push forward even if others didn't. He wrote this to Hideyoshi. The invasion forces under command of me, your humble servant, is going to conquer Hamgyongdo. It is a remote province in the northeastern part of Korea. The place is far from the territory of the Ming, more than 10 days march. If your highness wishes to still cross the sea to conquer the Ming, please give me an order at the nearest possible date. When I have your orders, I will come to you, not resting until I am with you so that I can take the lead in the conquest. He had left in July from Seoul during its capture and had continued northeast in the company of Daimyo Nabashima Naoshige and around 20,000 men. Kato knew that the roads ahead were largely unknown and potentially hostile. He needed a guide. Two locals were chosen, and the two pretended to not know the way forward. Kato wasn't fooled and had one of the men beheaded, and the other one, well, he now agreed to show them the way. Along the road, they found a Korean who spoke a little Japanese and pressed that man into service as an interpreter. After a week of marching, Kato Kiyomasa's second contingent entered into the Hamgyong province. The army commander who should have engaged with him, Yi Hun, decided instead to run away and fled into the Manchurian border. Later on, this man would actually be captured by the locals of Kapsen and killed for his cowardice. The provincial governor, Yu Yang Rip, tried to flee as well, but his own soldiers, enraged at his selfishness, tracked him down and handed him over to the Japanese. You may be thinking that there's no way that the Korean citizens and soldiers would turn on their leaders like this. But actually, this shouldn't be that surprising, as the people there really resented the Korean government. For a long time, they felt overtaxed, underrepresented, and generally just well overworked, with many of the government officials abandoning them. I mean, why shouldn't the people side with the Japanese? What was the benefit of fighting against the Japanese and probably dying? Because of this widespread sentiment, Kato's forces marched towards Manchuria mostly without trouble and was able to cover half of the ground in Hamgyong in just a few days. It was at this time that they encountered their first real resistance at the town of Kilchu outside a grain warehouse called Haizhongcheng. The province's northern army commander, Han Kukam, had gathered a large body of soldiers from the six garrisons in the northeast corner of the province and marched them south with the hope of stopping the invaders' advance. In the battle, Han's forces proved to be more skilled than any Kato had met so far. They arrayed their archers so that as one group released their arrows, another group was knocking theirs and preparing to release. They did this over and over, forcing any of the Ashiguru matchlock men that did try to fire upon them to have to face a wall of Korean arrows. They also made sure to stay on the higher ground so that any countercharge that the Japanese could make would be severely slowed down. Instead of keeping his men in the open, Kata ordered his men to take refuge in the grain warehouse. Commander Han was very happy with the result of his arrow barrages and ordered his, his men 
to prepare to charge the warehouse. One of his subordinates begged him not to, though, and said that the men should be rested and that they should just wait. Han Kukam ignored him, thinking the man was just being cowardly, and ordered his men to charge. This was a mistake. The Japanese inside had not simply been hiding out, but instead used bags of grain stacked up to form barricades and were ready. The Koreans charged into walls of concentrated matchlock fire. Commander Han Kukam ordered a retreat and left to his camp in one of the nearby mountains, with the plan that he would attack the next day and not repeat the same mistake. He wouldn't get that chance again, though. Kato, during the night, quietly led his men out from the warehouse and encircled the Korean camp with instructions to leave an opening for the Koreans to escape. At the first signs of light over the horizon, and with the mountain covered in fog, the Japanese leveled their matchlocks and opened fire. What followed next can only be described as a complete slaughter. Commander Han and his men instantly panicked. They had thought that the Japanese would have stayed in the warehouse and not followed them. But they did. Han and the remaining men retreated through the gap that Kato had provided. Thinking themselves lucky and that the Japanese were simply careless, the gap led them straight into a nearby swamp. Now, trapped completely, with no way to fight back, Kato's men cut them down one by one. Surprisingly though, Commander Han actually managed to escape. But that's where his luck ended though, as he was later captured by a group of Japanese sympathetic Koreans, who then turned him over to Kato Kiyomasa. He'd be kept in captivity for the next several months. After the battle, the two went their separate ways. Nabishima Naoshige set up his headquarters at Hamhung, while Kato Kiyomasa kept Kilchu under his jurisdiction. Weapons were confiscated, supplies were taken, and sometimes bought, and the population was surprisingly compliant to the Japanese, mostly due to the fact that they felt that their own government just hadn't treated them fairly, and the Japanese represent a chance to be rid of their oppressors. Other times, the populace was just simply terrified of the Japanese. While these rules were being put in place, Kato Kiyomasa led an expeditionary force north to the Tumen River, which led to his army skirmishing with the local Korean militias along the way. It was actually during this time that he managed to stumble upon and capture two incredibly important targets, the Korean princes Sunhua and Imhai. Technically, Kato didn't capture the two princes himself. It was technically a Korean official named Kuk kyung in See, this area was known to be the place where you stuck political undesirables. And as such, many of the people there held a grudge against the royal family. When the princes arrived in Kuk's town of Horyang, he proclaimed himself a general and captured them with his 500-man army, and then sent a letter south to the Japanese, letting them know that he wanted to be an ally and give them his prize. On August 30th, Kato entered into Horyang. When he arrived, he found both the princes in torn clothes, bound in ropes, and kneeling in mud. Kato turned to Cook and yelled that these are the sons of your king. How can you treat them like this? He then had the ropes removed and took them to his camp and was able to give them a proper meal. The princes would be continued to be treated well throughout the war, as was the Japanese custom. Cook Kyung-in 
as a reward, was given the title of governor in the new administration. This wasn't the end of Kato Kiyomasa's push north, though. In the next episode, the Demon General will head into the land of the Jurchens. See you then.